everyone. I didn't think it'd be quite so soon, but I just finished a sketchbook. So here's another sketchbook tool. I've had this particular sketchbook since I was about 10 years old. I picked it up from my parents' house when I went back to visit in 2019. There were quite a few blank pages in it and I thought it might be fun if I completed it now, like almost 20 years later. At the time, I used it to draw some creature designs. I loved to create stories also. So I used to write down all their attributes. In fact, you can see here in my 10 year old writing and it's a little bit unnerving just how much my <laughs> writing has not changed since then. <laughs> I think I would write about each creature. So it's superpowers, it's talents and qualities, it's flaws, it's um, physical appearance and it's characteristics. It makes me laugh to see that because I remember creating all these creatures. As you can see, I covered most of the cover with some sticker paper. That's because when I picked it up again to draw in it, I drew a face on the cover just to get me started, you know, first page syndrome type of thing. Really hated it. <laughs> Usually I don't tend to cover up what I don't like. For some reason, this one really irked me. It's nothing special. It's literally just a badly drawn face but I just didn't like that it was on the cover so I put some sticker paper on there and tried something again. Just giving myself a second chance was enough and I'm happy with that being there now. This is one of my own stickers. As you can see here I tore out quite a few pages, that's because these were the pages I'd drawn on when I was 10. The paper isn't the greatest quality, it's quite thin, stuff bleeds through easily, didn't want them to get any sort of damage on them while I worked, so I've taken them out. A lot of the sketches in this sketchbook were done during a severe period of art block last year. I started it in May 2020 and there was a big period where sketching just felt really really hard, I didn't want to do it. So a lot of the sketches in the next few pages are born out of that frustration. I think this one I made a doodle in my daily doodle diary in 2020 on and then I turned this concept into a more polished ink drawing in one of my 2017 Inktober sketchbooks I believe. I actually really like this idea, I really want to turn it into a painting. Again, you know me, if you watch any other of my <laughs> sketchbook tools, you'll know that uh, <laughs> my catchphrase should probably be, I would like to turn that into a painting someday. And then, um, yeah, <laughs> some happen, some don't, you know. This was probably back in May or June 2020. I was trying to design a GIF for my intro slide in my YouTube videos. And this was the basic concept I came up with for that intro gif that you saw at the beginning. This sketch I am in the process of turning into a bigger painting. It's been like that for a while though, <laughs> probably something like a year. I haven't really gone past the final sketch because I haven't really found a composition that clicks and that I feel really excited about. So it's still in the beginning stages. More frustration doodles. This was all in about a couple days where I was just trying to sit down and focus on drawing something I liked. It just didn't work. Over the course of completing this sketchbook, it has been difficult for me not to go back on these pages and try to complete them with stuff that I felt happier about. But I tried to make the conscious decision not to cover these up because for me, at least, covering things up feels like I want to run away from them and I don't want to face them. I don't want to look back on a period where I felt very unsatisfied and felt like I was wasting my time and I find that periods like that are just unavoidable. They are going to happen, there are going to be times where I'm going to create stuff I don't like and if every time I create stuff I'm dissatisfied with or disappointed in, I feel like I failed somehow. That for some reason puts a weird amount of moral value on that piece of work which I don't think is necessarily very beneficial or very productive to my practice and to my mental health as an artist. Instead, I tried to accept that sometimes things are not going to work out, but the simple fact that I sat down and tried is enough for these to be valuable. They are not a waste of space, a waste of pages, a waste of resources, they are not a waste of time. They are just something I was going through at the time, I tried to work through it, sometimes it works working through it, sometimes it doesn't, you need some, to do something else. But in this particular case, actually projecting my frustration on these pages really de-dramatised the whole sketching process, really made me feel less precious about my sketches, 
and about my sketchbook and help me reconnect with the process of trying to be creative rather than just aiming for a good result. If every time I sit down to sketch out something and what's in my mind is whether I'm going to manage to make this time productive and create something I like or whether I'm going to have been wasting my time because I created something that I didn't like, it puts a lot of pressure on those few minutes or hours I've managed to carve out into my day to create. And putting that amount of pressure on a creative endeavour, I find, for me at least, just makes it all worse. <laughs> it makes me so much more tense and I need to be so much more scared when I need to be. Whereas just accepting that sometimes things don't work out leads me to be more mindful of just the process and just leads me to just sit down and enjoy what I'm doing rather than uh, decide at the end of those hours whether everything was worth it or not. This was obviously, as you can see, the culmination of that, all that frustration. It was a very cathartic page to create. <laughs> And I actually like that idea. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure these mean absolutely anything to anyone other than me, but I'll show you the sketches that come from these two in the future if I do get round to making them. This is actually one of the rare pages I've actually come back to at the end of the sketchbook and redrew over. You can see the pencil lines at what I'd initially sketched out on these pages and then when I completed the sketchbook I was going through to see if I'd missed any pages I could keep sketching in. And this page was so empty and the sketches meant absolutely nothing and weren't actual concepts. So I decided I would just sketch over them. Uh, this is a concept that I would quite like to turn into a painting at some point. Again, I say that all the time. These are two sketches without references. These weren't meant to interact, they weren't a composition, but when I finished the page I realised that they looked like they were interacting. So I did this little doodle in the corner here to see how they would actually be interacting if I had intentionally made them too. I take a lot of notes in my sketchbooks, there's a lot of ideas that come to me while I sketch. These are more of my frustration doodles. Um, I was still in the midst of my art block at the time. This one you'll have seen in this video here. I used this sketch as a base for this idea here. As you can see they ended up being very different so I suspect I'll probably try and do another painting based on this idea here because they're just so different that I don't feel I have gotten this idea out of my system yet. This is another one that I quite like. I don't know if I'll ever turn it into a painting because it doesn't hit a chord just as much as some of my other sketches, but I do like the visual of it, so maybe it'll become a smaller piece? I'm not sure. The next few pages are going to look very similar to each other. I would do some gesture drawing on the left in pen and did some pose iterations on the right for a big painting. If you've seen my tether video that came out in June 2020 where I show you my whole process for a big painting, for this big painting in fact, in these sketches I was trying to figure out the pose of my character, specifically the hand poses, and I did a few iterations of them to try and work out something. As you can see the painting ended up very different from these sketches. <laughs> so as you can see very similar layout here, and again. And again, this was supposed to be uh, a similar sketch to this. It was trying a new hand pose. It was sort of a bland sketch, so I thought I could turn it into something more. So I tried out another concept I've had in mind for a while. More frustration doodling. This was another day of being very frustrated <laughs> with my skills. I I rented out my frustration by sketching out a corner of my studio. Something that I'm definitely not very good at is perspective, so I want to get better at that because I have planned, maybe, perhaps, <laughs> of maybe creating a comic in the future, but I would need to be much, much better at perspective in order for that to happen, so I'm definitely going to try and practice that sort of thing a bit more in the future. But yeah, this sketch is a mess, but hey, that's how everything starts. This is probably my most completed spread in this whole sketchbook. You'll have seen this sketch maybe a couple times already in my 2020 Daily Doodle Diary, which you can watch the sketchbook tour of here. It's one of those ideas that I like in theory, but I can't seem to find a way to draw it that feels 
flowy and smooth. It always sort of feels a little bit stiff and awkward. Uh, so I need to work on this a little bit more before I turn it into anything. I suspect I will do a big painting out of it at some point, but uh, I need to work out a lot of kinks first. Some studies of poses, I think without references for these ones. I started doing some dynamic pose studies at some point in my practice. I still struggle a lot with human anatomy, so I find that dynamic poses are quite useful for studying structures that I don't quite understand yet. Another quick sketch. This page was me practicing with this pen here. I've sadly ran out of ink, I can't show you. <laughs> I don't know if I've got extra cartridges. Anyway, this pen has a flat five pronged nib. It's really cool, but it's really difficult to handle. I'm pretty sure it's not meant for drawing, but I, f I picked it up because I thought it could be cool for drawing. So every so often when I just want to have fun without any pressure, I pick up a tool that I'm not used to and I try to doodle with it. So these are the results of that basically. A page <laughs> with scribbles on it. A sketch I like, a bit too similar to my phosphines painting I think, so I don't think I would explore it as a further further painting, but I just like it as it is. It sort of looks like me a bit, <laughs> which happens sometimes, which I think is quite funny. Doodling, doodling, doodling. Some life drawing studies, mostly straight in pen, because I find that helps me focus on the poses I'm trying to draw a lot more than if I have the leeway that being able to erase gives me. More. More. And then the next few pages you'll have seen in this video here where I was preparing to paint a big number of big paintings. These thumbnails turned into this painting here. This is a sketch based on the thumbnails you just saw for that final painting you just saw. These thumbnails here turned to this painting here. These thumbnails here turned to this painting. And these thumbnails then turn into a painting in the end because I didn't find a composition I found satisfactory yet. I do want to paint it at some point, but I need to find a way to paint it that works first. This was supposed to be for another one of those paintings in that series. Uh, still haven't found something I liked yet, composition-wise, so it hasn't happened yet, but probably will in the future at some point. Again, some dynamic pose studies. And more. And more. Another sketch for this painting here. This sketch changed so much <laughs> towards the end. It turned into this painting here that you can see in the corner. Uh, as you can see, absolutely nothing to do with each other aside from the head being in the body. This painting became one of my favorite things I did in 2020. Probably my favorite spread <laughs> in this sketchbook because it's sort of clean looking and colorful. This sketch became this painting here. This is another sketch for Struck. Some hand iterations for one of the paintings that I was planning on doing that didn't happen. More practicing with that weird pen I just showed you. More of that here. And more pose iterations for that painting that didn't happen with the threads coming out of the body. More, more, and these were poses for Shelter, the painting I just said I liked from 2020. This one here, I did a lot of doodling using myself as a pose reference to figure out how I wanted the character to be sitting. This ended up being um, the closest I got to a final sketch. And then there were a few months where I didn't really sketch in here. I took a bit of a break, uh, I think over December and January 2020, 2021. 
and this was me trying to get myself to get back into the sketching habit because I really didn't feel like it. <laughs> more of that, more just trying to get out of a bit of an, another art block. I literally just took some stencils and started trying to fill the page with the stencils just to get my pen on the on the paper and it's all worked because I, I, I find that layering makes me less anxious about the page. If I layer, stuff just looks sort of cool and messy and I like it and it makes me less stressed about drawing. So that's what I was trying to do here. As you can see, it bled through. I think I drew this purple sketch before I decided to use marker on the underside. Uh, I sort of knew that it would bleed through, but I just wanted to be messy and not precious. So that's why I went ahead with it anyway. Lots of note taking for lots of ideas that were coming through. Still me trying to push through my non-desire to draw in the sketchbook. And it sort of worked out in the end. A slightly more finished sketch where I was trying to render the idea of light coming off of the character. I'm not sure that worked out, but it was a test. This little sketch became this small painting that you'll have seen me make in this video here. Some stuff that might look completely illegible to you, but I know what's going on. <laughs> I'll probably turn this into a more in-depth sketch at some point. More, more, more doodling. Oh, so these small drawings I created for my Patreon tiers because I revamped my Patreon page a few weeks ago. This one was for my $1 tier, $5 tier, uh, $10 tier. This is for the $35 tier, which is my highest tier. And this one was for my $20 tier. More note taking and doodling. This was some very loose trying to get an idea down, not trying to be perfect about it or accurate in any shape or form, just wanting to work out some poses for an idea that I like. Might turn into a painting. Take a shot of water every time I say it. I'm going to turn something into a painting. That way you'll keep very, very hydrated and you'll be glowing. And then, finally, here we are, all completed. Again, some of my tenure writing here with some names of the creatures I drew in the sketchbook. Pretty sure this was some note-taking when I was playing a uh, puzzle game on my iPad. Anyway, <laughs> here we go. This was my sketchbook from when I was 10, drawn in now. I think the sketchbook spanned May 2020 to April 2021, so a little bit under a year to complete it, which is about average for how long it takes me to complete a sketchbook generally. This one was not particularly pleasant to work in, as I said again, the paper was not very nice, but the fact that I had it for so long and that it still has some scribbles from when I was so young and now it's 20 years later and I'm still drawing and actually have out as my job, I think it's sort of cool. I, I like that things feel like they've come full circles in some way. If you would like to browse the pages at your leisure and see them in more detail, I have a PDF uh, with scans of every page on my Patreon available for my lowest tier so you definitely can check that out if you would like to see this again. In the meantime, uh, thank you so much for watching. I really enjoyed your company today and I'll have a painting video for you next and I hope to see you there. So <laughs> take really good care of yourselves everyone. I hope you're all well and uh, I'll see you very soon. Bye!